Hello and welcome back, Catherine Ryan, Evan Scub, and everyone else that might be lurking out there. So late last night while filming, this network rack did arrive, and this is basically what we've been prepping for this whole time. Uh, and so before we get it mounted, I just wanted to cover a couple of things about it, not in a review or anything like that, because there's plenty online, I believe. Uh, but this is the only reason I bought it was because it's the second cheapest network rack that I could find and also because it has some pretty interesting features. So just to quickly go over some of those interesting features, uh, obviously it has a door that's removable, which is really cool and lockable if you need, like let's say you have like a 1U NAS or something in here and you want your drives to be locked away or like an NVR or something, that's really nice to have. And also the side panels are removable and they don't just like pop out. Um, you actually have to release those from the inside, which is really nice. And then they just pop off. So that really helps with like doing cable management, things of that nature. And another great thing about it too, is that you can actually run cables through the top, which is not entirely unique on its own, but also through the bottom. So this thing is essentially reverse reversible. I can literally take it, flip it upside down, and it's the same configuration as, as if it was right side up which is really cool. It also has two mounting places on the top for two 120 millimeter fans and then two on the bottom should you need them. Uh, fans are not included. And in fact, most of the hardware that you would need for this is not included. And by most, I think I technically just mean mounting to a wall kind of hardware because it did give me um, some cage nuts and screws, you know, to mount things to it. But uh, that's not, I mean, that's cool and all, but I really prefer to have some mounting hardware at a minimum, anything, uh, instead of nothing at all. But uh, we'll get to that when we get there. So those are pretty much the things I just wanted to highlight right off the bat. And I think we are ready to go ahead and get it mounted. Actually, that's not true. We have to take down the um, coat rack or whatever those things are called and the server room first, and then we'll be ready to mount this beast. So let's get to it. All right, so first things first, we just gotta clear all this stuff off the top so we can actually take this down, uh, or this, this uh, I don't know what it's called, coat hanger or coat rack down, whatever the heck it's called. And then once we do that, we will unscrew all the screws from the wall and then demount it and then figure out where exactly we're gonna put our network rack, which I already think is gonna be off to the left and then a little bit higher uh, up. All right, so we are ready to remove this thing from, I don't know where to start. We should start on the corners, I guess. We're ready to move this thing, so let's just start somewhere. Anywhere is fine. Oh, these are really long, nice screws. Huh. Man, I have no idea how to remove this thing or these little things in here. I think I'm gonna end up breaking something. It is still on there really good. That was almost my foot. That's pretty cool. Wish we could leave it like this. <laughs> All right. We scratched the shit out of the walls getting it out, but we did it. Okay, so now that we successfully removed the uh, coat rack, uh, we need to figure out where we're gonna put the rack itself. Now, I was thinking originally off to the left, but I think that's gonna be quite a hassle. So I think we're gonna put it just over top of the panel here. Um, so I have mixed feelings about it, but I think right here will be nice in the long run um yeah i think it'll be nice in the long run so now we just need to figure out where oh well yeah we need to figure out where our studs are and this one's this is actually gonna be a lot easier because there's a stud on either side of this and you know um a two by four is like one and a half inches thick i think which is something like that or one and a half inches wide i don't know uh so it's about something like that and you know we can kind of guess that it's going to be up here somewhere at one and a half inches and there's another one on this side which is perfect which will also be uh, somewhere at about one and a half inches so i'm thinking about using the uh, included mounting uh, hanger that's that comes with this as like a spot to check and see where i want to mount 
Now, what really sucks about this particular unit is it doesn't seem like it's made uh, to mount to directly to studs. And um, I think what you're supposed to do is put like a piece of plywood down and mount that piece of plywood to the studs and not this directly to the studs itself because, and the reason why I say that is because these holes don't really line up. I don't think they really line up with where the center of a stud is or at least not the exact center of a stud is. Um, they'll still hit the stud, but it's gonna be like offset. So I think what that means is the server's gonna be a little bit to the left. So if this hole is the center, if this hole is the center and this hole is the center, then it's gonna be off to the left a little bit and not perfectly centered, which is fine. Uh, but I don't know, I, I think it's just what you're gonna like. So I'm thinking the bottom will go somewhere right about here and then we'll just kind of mark the bottom and then figure out where we want to go on the top um yeah so hopefully so i guess i need to offset it so i get a better idea so it'll look something like that and again the top is going to hang right off of here um and i i want the bottom to be about here and i think the unit it's got like a really tall size i i don't remember how tall it is um but Let's just for fun say that the unit is uh, like 16 inches tall. Um, it's going to be, well, that's 12 inches. So it's going to be like another, I don't know, four inches taller than that. And uh, I think that'll look fine. Yeah, I think it'll look fine. Let's make some holes. <laughs> God. Well, unfortunately, it's gonna be one of those times I won't be able to record at the same time I do the work because I'm a single man uh, doing a single amount of work. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to basically leave you guys here and then, uh, I don't know, maybe do an update somewhere along the line so you can get the gist of what was going on in between, uh, like, or before we actually mount the server rack itself or the network rack itself, but I'll, I'll do I'll do what I can. Sorry. Okay, so I learned uh, something really important today. My stud finder is at inaccurate as hell. So this is supposedly center. That supposedly center. The uh, inside of that circle is supposedly center. I got three hits like right there in the center. I got a, a center hit there. I got a center hit there. And this side isn't much better. It's so inconsistent. I have a center. Oh, I have a center hit here, there, 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 and down here. I have no idea where the stud is at all. Like, I know it's got to be somewhere like here. Hopefully it's just, you know, wide enough where those are approximately the center and we can uh, just drill in there and not have a problem. But, uh, yeah, this is getting kind of scary. So let's kind of discuss the game plan here. So these are... Um, two inch by one fourth, so that's the diameter, uh, lug screws or lug bolts, whatever you wanna call them. Um, I call them lug screws. And these should go deep enough into the, to the actual stud. And because it's nice and girthy, uh, you know, something I'm not familiar with, this should hold um, the network rack pretty well. We're gonna be using four of these. Now, in order to give ourselves hopefully a little bit more stability or something, um, I bought these washers as well. And these will basically, um, I don't know, give me a warm fuzzy feeling about holding uh, the, the, the steel material better to the wall and uh, there'll be more contact, I guess. So, I don't know. So I'm hoping that works. Now, I thought about getting uh, the same screw, the one fourth by two inch in a one fourth by uh, two and a half inch uh, because two by fours are something, some weird, I don't know, dimensions nowadays. Um, so it's like, I think they're three inches wide. Um, so that's about like that, I guess, or somewhere around there. And the, the two and a half one inches would have been good, but I was just really, I wasn't really sure what the true dimensions of a two by four were. So I was like, you know what, I'm just going with two inches. That should be plenty. This should work. Now this is an all zinc um, screw lug. I hope it works. I could not find any steel uh, ones. And uh, so we're just gonna go with this and hopefully you know, this thing doesn't fall off in the middle of the night. Just to kind of give you a little bit more visualization here. So basically we will be putting our um, 
screw like that in there uh, with the washer. So this will be secured to the wall. And this is where most of the pressure is gonna be um, on the server rack, because uh, it'll be resting right here on these um, teeth, I guess. Uh, so, so it'll be resting there. And so all the pressure is gonna be on these two, on only two screws in these holes. So uh, hopefully it works out. All right, and one last thing before I get to drilling. So I'm actually gonna drill a pilot hole into the stud first, and this is a 1 8 inch uh, drill bit. And the reason why I'm drilling just a small pilot hole is because I don't think these are self-driving uh, zinc uh, lug screws. So I'm just gonna drill that hole to you know help give the screw uh, a, an easier time when it goes into the stud and uh, hopefully that'll you know help keep it secure in there uh, so i don't have to do as much work with my drill set so that's what we're going to do first and then once we have that done i think that's we're pretty much done i mean like literally we just got to hang the thing and we're good to go so <laughs> wish me luck oh, oh, oh and just one more thing i am not a professional i have never hung anything like this before so please for the love of god do not do what I do because you'll probably ruin your stuff. And I don't want that to happen because I'll feel terrible. All right, now I'm going to hang it. Good Lord. So there's not really a way to explain what's going on here, but this um, thing is stuck on the bolt. And I've tried with all of my might to remove it, and it is not coming off. And I'm afraid to undo this because it will deteriorate the hole that I made, I guess. I'm not really sure. And, uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do, but this, this, this project is officially dead in the water, which sucks. All right. So I just ended up beating the dang thing off with a hammer and it took a few, I don't know, 10 or 15 hits and it popped right off. And I kind of marked up the wall while doing all that, but we did it. Um, now we just start, now we're ready to mount the network rack and, uh, oh, and I took a regular, uh, wrench like this and torqued it as far down as I could. Uh, to, I don't know, get it all the way up flush against the wall. And I think I'm successful because as you can see, there's actually pins or whatever, screw pops, whatever those things are called in the drywall. So that's, it's pretty dig I'm tied on there. And I'm pretty sure it's not gonna go anywhere. Uh, so let's try and mount our network rack, network rack and hope to God it doesn't fall off. All right, now for the hard part. Hopefully I can get this thing hung up here. Luckily, uh, there's fan holes in the bottom so I can see where the teeth are. Oh, oh, I'm in. I'm out. Come on. Oh, I'm in. Oh, all right. Holy cow. All right, so now what we need to do before we put anything else in here is get these last two um, zinc, which, uh, by the way, I think I found out that these are zinc coated and steel on the inside. Hopefully that's true. But anyway, uh, you never know what comes from China these days. Uh, they're probably lead, actually. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, so we need to put these on the bottom, too, to help secure it or give it uh, another securing point. So that way it's just not two screws, which uh, I think should be more than enough. But again, not an expert. Don't know these things. Take everything I say to you with a grain of salt. So I'm going to do that. Unfortunately, I can't show you that either. So to be continued. All right, I hope to God this will stay up. So let's do an after action kind of view here. So we still have to screw um, some screws into the teeth and then into the actual chassis or the rack chassis itself. I've got both black screws there. I got one here because that's in the stud and then I was gonna do another one here and I started drilling the hole, but uh, turns out I actually won't be able to drill it straight into the stud. It'll be like kind of cockeyed and I didn't want to do that. So, yeah, it looks like we're only going with three. That's not going to be dangerous at all. And all we have to do is unscrew the bottom here so we can feed our cables up into the back and then basically mount everything else. We got lucky also. Um, so I didn't think about this at all, but apparently this door, uh, without thinking, swings way out. Um, I mean, it swings way out here. And if I would have put it in the far left corner like I originally intended, it would have hit the wall and I wouldn't have been able to open it, which meant I would have had to um, totally take the door off, which would have been fine, but I kind of like having the ability to open and close it and also lock it. Uh, not that anything's really gonna be here that's important, but being able to lock it is kind of cool. So uh, on the next part. Okay, so we are finally at the point now where we can get all of this network equipment mounted. I got it all over the place. 
up there. So this is six U, so that should perfectly fit everything I have. I have one U, two U, three, three units plus uh, that, which is actually, the, this is the AT&T router. AT&T router is actually smaller than one U, but um, thankfully there's a one U shelf, so that's four U. Uh, but thankfully on this uh, sixth unit here, um, there's some headroom uh, where we can slide in the AT&T router and um, we'll put everything else below that. So we have, what I list, uh, six, six, and then this will make, wait, wait, no, I said four. One, two, three, four. Yeah, okay, four, and this will be fifth, so we'll have one new left over, uh, which is perfect. So I think we're gonna put the um, router and stuff at the very top. We'll put our first patch panel on um, five, leave this blank, fill, fill, or switch, switch, and UPS. And we'll be done. Let's get started. All right, so we're just gonna put all these cage nuts in uh, to this so we can get all of our equipment mounted. And it's pretty simple. I don't know what this tool is called at, at all, but if you don't have one of these for your server rack, you need it bad. Uh, it will make putting cage nuts in so easy and also removing them super easy as well. Uh, it's literally that simple. And thankfully, uh, Triplight found it in their hearts to provide us with cage nuts and screws. I know it was a very costly item for them to include because they didn't include us mounting hardware or other mounting hardware, but thanks, I guess. All right, we got our UPS mounted, finally. And now we just have two switches, a patch panel, and the shelf, and we're pretty much done. Uh, minus cable management, which I have a feeling I'm gonna end up doing way later because I'm getting really tired. <laughs> All right, and this is basically what we're looking at. We are getting pretty close to done. We just need to put in our patch panel and connect everything. Now, I think I am gonna connect some stuff, uh, not in the patch panel just yet, and see, like some of that stuff will probably just plug directly into the switch for now, and then we'll do the patch panel over time. Uh, but we'll see how I feel about it. It's getting kind of late, so I'm gonna try and wrap up as much as I can, and then we'll cut back to, I don't know, something else later. So I stayed up pretty late last night trying to put the final touches on the rack, and this is pretty much what it looks like. Um, it isn't done just yet. Like, I took the front door off uh, to help me, you know, kind of run, make some cables and stuff, and we've got a whole bundle of cables just coming through the bottom here. We'll clean all of this up eventually. And we still gotta figure out where a couple of these wires go in the house. So for instance, this unlabeled one, I have no idea where it goes. Um, I made an end for it, but honestly, I can't find a single Cat 6 outlet anywhere or another, another room that has an outlet. And this one here, I believe goes to the master bedroom. So I'm gonna hook that one up here shortly and see if that's true, but yeah. Other than that, you know, we might need to make our own cables since I have leftover cable from my earlier cable runs. So that way these would be a lot shorter, not just hanging out all over the place. And then we'll probably end up um, converting our cameras uh, onto the last couple of ports here. So yeah, that's pretty much it. That was a lot more work than it should have been. Good Lord. I have a lot to clean up. Well, I guess we're just gonna go ahead and wrap things up here because there's not really much left to say. Uh, we'll probably do a follow-up video later at some point and kind of do like a new tour of the network or whatever uh, comes from this. So anyway, I just wanna thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.